Hi makers, this is Alexandra with Minerva. Today we are going to be working on a sew along for new look pattern 6585, which is an unlined winter coat. Perfect if you are a beginner, intermediate, or even advanced. So before I show you the fabric that we are going to be using today, I wanted to remind you to sign up for a free account on our website. You can share your makes, gather inspiration, or talk to other makers around the world. And of course, don't forget to sign up for a Minerva Craft Club account. You get a discount on all your orders for 12 months. All right, makers, let me show you the fabric we are going to be using today. Pattern from New Look 6585 calls for a double face fabric, of course, because it is unlined. So as you move, you will be able to see the inside. So I have this gorgeous 100% double face wool and it is in this beautiful berry color. All right, makers, let me show you what you get with this sewing kit. Hi, makers. Today we're working on a sew along for New Look 6585, and this is part of Minerva sewing kits. And of course, your sewing kit also includes this beautiful double face, 100% wool, we have this on our website in different colorways. So of course, if you decide that perhaps you want a different colorway, there are quite a few to choose from. Let me show you what else is included in our sewing kits. You also got matching thread, ballpoint needles, very useful if you are working with wool. And of course, you also get lining fabric, and this is perfect if you are doing view C. So a couple of things to keep in mind. You want to make sure that you pre-treat your fabric, especially when you are working with wool. Wool tends to um, shrink like some fabrics do, but you really want to make sure that you pre-treat your wool. A couple of ways how to do this. You can send it to a dry cleaner and do dry cleaning. You can also um, uh, grab your iron and put it in the wool setting and you want to hover your iron with a lot of seam and that will pre-treat your fabric. Or what I like to do is I grab, like to grab a cloth, a separate cloth, and just get it really nice and damp, not dripping wet, but very nicely damp and then go ahead and pop my fabric in my dryer for about 30 minutes with that damp cloth and that will pre-shrink your fabric. So makers, let me show you what pieces you are going to need to make this pattern. You're going to need pattern piece number one, and this is the front and hood, and you're gonna cut two, and keep in mind that these pattern pieces are rather large, so make sure that um, you keep that in mind. You're also going to need pattern piece number two, and this is the back, and you're gonna cut one on the fold. There's your grain line. You're also going to need pattern piece number three, and this is the sleeve front. You're gonna cut two. You're also going to need a pattern piece number four, and this is the sleeve back, and you're gonna cut two. You're also going to need the back facing and you are going to cut one and make sure you pay attention to the grain line because this is on the bias. You're also going to need pattern piece number six and these are the pockets you're going to cut two. And of course, you are going to, if you are doing view C, this is the pocket piece for a view C, and you're going to cut two of fabric and two of lining. All right, makers, go ahead to and prepare your fabric. Don't forget to do that. It's very important that you do that. If you are working with a wool or a wool blend, go ahead and cut your fabric, mark your notches, and let's get it ready. Makers, always make sure you pay attention to the grain line. Of course, right on our long pattern pieces, I am right there with the edge 
bud for piece number five. You have your brain line, which is right there. It's asking you to do it up a bias. So go ahead and mark your fabric. Make sure that you edit all your notches and your dots and go ahead and cut your fabric. Hi makers, first things first, now that you went ahead and cut your fabric, mark your notches, and of course that you protreated your fabric before all of that, we're going to go ahead and start with piece number one. And you should have two pieces for pattern piece number one. So I want you to stay stitch from the edge of the hood all the way to the small dot in your pattern piece. You're gonna have two dots around this area, a large one and a small one. The small one should be by that, kind of like that corner. And then come down one inch or two and a half centimeters. So again, I want you to stay stitch. So regular stitches on your machine. And we wanna do this because we're gonna be working around this area and we wanna make sure that we reinforce this area. So I want you to stay stitch starting at the edge all the way. I want you to stop at the small dot, pivot, and I want you to go down one inch or two and a half centimeters. And you are going to use a five eighths of an inch or one and a half centimeter seam allowance for this pattern. All right, makers, go ahead and do that now for both pattern pieces number one. All right, makers, now that we went ahead and did the stay stitching, on piece number one, we're gonna go ahead and put this off to the side. And I want you to grab your pieces number six, and this is your pocket. So usually what I like to do with my pockets is I like to create a template of my pocket and I take out the seam allowance of my template so in our case, is one and a half centimeters or five eighths of an inch. And as you can see, I take out my seam allowance and I go ahead and I wanna show you this. And I do this for all of my pockets. It's just a quick way, especially when I have rounded corners and I have several pockets, I just wanna make sure that they all match. And of course, I also cut the spot where I have my full line and on New Look 6585, we do not have, we do have a seam allowance on this line, but I need that seam allowance, hence why it says no seam allowance on the side, full line, but I kept my seam allowance on this because we have to stitch this, so I don't wanna get rid of my seam allowance. So once I do that, I have my pocket, right? So once I do that, I go ahead and I do a stitch at 3 eighths of an inch within this um, seam allowance in my pocket. And what I wanna do is I wanna leave my threads long once I start, but I wanna back stitch at the end. I'm going to show you how I do that. And I do this so when I, um, I gather up my stitches on this corner that it encircles my pocket template and it gives me a um, two matching pockets each and every time. Also, we the pattern has you fold and then it has you it has you folding and then it has you folding, right? stitching on the edge so you can turn it. I am just going to fold, just going to fold it right at that spot. So I'm going to just fold, right? I am going to cut the corner and I wanna do that because my fabric is a little bit thicker, it's a beautiful, 100% wool, but I wanna make sure that I don't have a bulk on my pockets. I want them to stay fairly flat. So that is what I'm going to do. If you have a thinner fabric, perhaps you have a lovely wool blend and it's a little bit thinner and it will not give you bulk when you turn the pockets, you can do that. But for now, I'm going to show you how I do that um, that stitch here at three eighths and how my pockets will um will gonna go in and circle the uh pocket template let me show you 
all right makers so i went ahead and did gathering stitches and again as i mentioned i left my threads long at the start but i went ahead and back stitched all the way at the end and the reason why i want to do this is because i want to use my pocket template and i do this at my pressing station and see my full line that's right there what i do is i pull on my threads right and what that does you know you want to make sure that you keep you keep your pocket template in place but once that does once i pull in my gathering stitches that will encircle my fabric on my pocket template and i will get two matching pockets every single time so again make sure that you use lots of steam to go ahead and encircle this right and again, your pocket template doesn't have seam allowance on the side or on the rounded corner. And use lots of steam, and then you can press it down with your hand. If you don't have a tailor's clapper, I don't have a fancy one. I have a raw piece of wood. And what I do is I press it, and I use, again, lots of steam. And once I pull the lots of steam and I press my, um, my piece of wood down, count to 10 and then let it go. Once I do that, I also want you to fold your fabric, right? And again, same thing, press it with a lot of steam. The pattern's asking us to fold, fold and then fold again, but I really don't want any bulk on my fabric and I am using this beautiful 100% wool. It is fairly thick, it'll keep me very warm, but I wanna make sure that I don't have a bulk on my pockets. So I am just folding it down once, all right? If you are using a different fabric or something that's lighter, you can certainly follow the pattern, but I wanna do this and of course, my wool will not fray, so I don't use, have to use an overlocker. I don't have to cast it, but you definitely want to make sure that you press it with lots of seam and that you press it down with your hand. Just keep it down once you press it or that you use Taylor's clapper or like my fancy one, a raw piece of wood. So go ahead and do that makers. And this is what your pocket is going to look like. Once you do that, I want you to do two stop rows of um, top stitching on your pockets. So go ahead and do that now for both pockets. That is piece number six. Go ahead and do that now. Makers, and I am again in my pressing station. And again, I'm going to get lots of steam. And encircle that around my pocket. And then press. You want to count probably to like 10, right? And then let go. And again, press, count to 10, and let go. Once you do that, I want you also to do the same for the fold line. Again, lots of steam. And press. Once you do that, I'm going to pull this off. And what I like about this is that I have two beautiful matching pockets. I'm going to go ahead and top stitch and then I'll show you what these look like. But go ahead and do that now for both pockets. That's piece number six. Maker, so again, once you go ahead and press your pockets, and you press on the fold line, I want you to top stitch. So two rows of top stitching. I went ahead and did my first row of top stitching at five eighths or one and a half inch away from the edge. And then I did another row at a quarter of an inch or seven eighths from the edge. Or if you want, um, go ahead and do that for both pockets. Once you do that, I want you to grab 
piece number one that we just um, did some top stitching and then I have my two put this pocket over there so you have those two pieces right there and you should also have a notch right there here's my two notches so you want to go ahead and pin let me get my pins you want to go ahead and pin and again you have those notches on your pocket and also on your piece number one so we are essentially just setting in our pockets so makers now I want you to go ahead and edge stitch your pockets in and you're gonna do this for both your um, front pockets and I am doing view B on um, on our pattern so go ahead and pin both of your pockets and I want you to add stitch and I'm gonna show you in the machine how I do this makers so I'm gonna go ahead and edge stitch both of my pockets in and if you see in the back I have a Gina I'm a jig and we have these on the website and I will go ahead and link these in case you want one they are very handy and I like them because when I start sewing this pocket again my fabric is thicker so I want to make sure that my presser foot can go ahead and get through that hump as I'm starting if you don't have one it's okay you can also grab a scrap piece of fabric fold it and just put it up behind your uh, presser foot and that will go ahead and start but it's just a nice little tool that you have and again I will go ahead and link that below and I am using an edge stitch presser foot but if you don't have one all you have to do is just use your regular presser foot and just go ahead and line the edge of your presser foot with the edge of your fabric and just follow that and just go slow. And makers, notice I didn't backstitch at the start. I went ahead and let left my threads long, and I'm going to tie those by hand. And I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to grab this the side that I have open of my pocket and I'm just gonna baste that in right I'm just gonna lengthen my um lengthen my stitch I just want to lengthen my stitch and just baste this. Attached our pockets and did our bar tags. I want you to go ahead and with right sides together. The pattern is asking us to clip right where we reinforce to that dot. Remember this dot? So the pattern is asking us to clip right towards that dot. And again, you want to make sure that you do this and that you do not clip your stitches. That's why we did that. We reinforced, right? And then I want you to match your notches on this side and that you stitch you together your hood. So again, with right sides together, go ahead and pin.
So makers, I want you to stitch 5 8 inch allowance or one and a half centimeter. Don't forget the back stitch at the start and all the way to the end. Go ahead and do that now. So makers, I have my Gina Majig again and I want to make sure that I back stitch and keep going. makers and now that we went ahead and stitched our hood pattern is asking us to go ahead and press it off to the side and that we stitch a quarter of an inch to just hold that seam down we're working with wool if we do that we're going to get a little bit of a bulk so what i want you to do is i want you to grade your seams and the way you do that is you just grab your scissors and again you just grab one of your seam allowances and you cut it remember our coat is on line so in this part of the hood will open so we want to make sure that we really do a really nice job so you really want to go ahead and grade your seam allowances right so again i just cut one side and now what i'm going to go do i'm going to go to my pressing station and i'm going to press this towards the side and again i'm going to use lots of steam and then i'm going to stitch that edge down i'll go ahead and do that for the seam allowances on your hood makers so i went ahead and pressed my seam allowance and this is what it looks like from the inside and this is what it looks like from the outside so i went ahead remember i went ahead and graded my seams press my seams to the side a lot of steam use that tailored clapper and then go ahead and stitch at that edge so that's the inside that's the outside looks pretty darn good so now i want you to put this off to the side so you went ahead and put that front pieces to the side and i want you to grab piece number two which is our back and I want you to grab piece number four, which is your back sleeve. And you have two notches right there. And your sleeve has two notches right there. And I want you to go ahead and pin. Makers, I want you to do this for both sleeves the sleeve back and that is sleeve piece pattern piece number four once you pin i want you to stitch five eighths inch seam allowance or one and a half centimeters don't forget the back stitch at the start and at the end go ahead and do that for both sleeves that's piece number four and that is your sleeve back makers i went ahead and attached my sleeve back which is piece number four to piece number two which is the back of my coat makers in the pattern it just says to go ahead and trim your seams and press them to the back we have a beautiful double face wool and we are not lining this coat because it is not lined but i really want to make sure that when you are wearing this coat that is easy for you to put it on so just like we did with the hood I want you to go ahead and perhaps trim your seam allowance, the one that is closest to the sleeve, back. So again, 
trim. I want you to grade those seams. And I want you to press this towards the back, right? And I want you to, again, stitch, right? You're going to have a stitch on the back. Why are we doing this? The pattern is asking you to just go ahead and press. We have really nice wool, and I want to make sure that this looks beautiful inside and out, and this is the way to do it. So go ahead and trim your seam, the one that's closest to piece number four, that is your sleeve bag. Press, again, lots of steam, and stitch. Go ahead and do that now for both of your seam allowances. Go ahead and do that now. Makers, so I went ahead again and trim that seam allowance towards piece number four, that's the sleeve back, and I pressed my seam allowance towards the seam, towards the sleeve, rather. And then I am going to go ahead and I'm stitching. Guys, I'm using the edge of my presser foot with that seam, and I'm just lining that up. back stitch and I'm going to show you in the design table how this is going to look makers so this is what my um my sleeve and my sleeve my coat back looks like that's the inside that's the outside now that you did that I want you to I want you to grab your shears and I want you to get as close as possible and cut. And cut that seam allowance. And makers, you don't have to do this. The pattern's not asking you to, but I think it's going to look pretty good. And this is what my other seam looks like, the one that I did before. Again, this is the inside and this is the outside. So that is a nice little finish that you can do on this coat, especially again, this coat is not lined. So when you are walking about, if somebody sees the inside of your coat, it looks as nice as the outside. So go ahead and do that now for your sleeve back and any seams that we attach, you can do them this way. Go ahead and do that now. Makers, now that we went ahead and finished our attaching pieces number four to piece number two, I want you to grab piece number three. And this is your sleeve front. And you have a notch right there. And your piece number four has a notch right there. Again, match your notches. And pin. And these have a little bit of a curve, so you may have to ease those in. So makers, I want you to do this for both pieces number three, and that is your sleeve front. Attach it to piece number four. That's your sleeve back. So go ahead and stitch five eighths inch seam allowance. Don't forget the back stitch at the start and all the way to the end. So go ahead and attach the sleeve fronts. Go ahead and do that now. Makers, now that we got our sleeve front attached to our sleeve back, and this is the right side, that's the wrong side. Now, I want you to grab your hood piece. And makers with right sides together, you have two notches, and then you also have two notches. And you wanna make sure that you align those. 
I will for sure have to ease mine in and always start at the center back for this. Also remember we had that notch, not a notch, but we clipped in. So I want you to pin right there. Right, you have, that's where we clipped and reinforced. You have also your notches and your sleeve. So again, start at the center back and work your way. the bottom of your sleeve. You're attaching the front of your coat to the back of your coat, but you are starting at the back of the neckline. Again, this is where that center back is, right? You're going to pin, make sure that those notches, that's why it's so important to do your notches and all your pattern pieces. Again, same thing on the side. This is why we reinforce this piece right here because we're going to be working on the neckline. Makers, again, you have that notch right under the sleeve. So go ahead and pin. Again, makers, start for this. I really want you to start at the center back because you have those two notches at the center back and that's where everything's going to align. And then you have this corner right here at the neckline where we clipped, right? When we started sewing, we reinforced this edge. So go ahead and pin, all right? And if you have to ease things in a little, then you can always do that. So go ahead and do that now. Makers, now that you pinned, I want you to start at the center back and work your way to the left. And when you get to this corner, I want you to get to that corner. I want you to pivot. Again, and you, remember, you're going to be using 5 8 inch seam allowance. Don't forget to backstitch at the start and all the way to the end, which is right under the sleeve. Again, start at the center back, work your way to the right, pivot right there, and then keep going all the way down to the center sleeve. Do that for the left and the right side. Go ahead and do that now. Makers, so again, I'm starting at the center back using a 5 8 inch seam allowance or one and a half centimeters. Don't forget the back stitch at the start. And just take your time. It's a lot of fabric, but just take your time.
makers and I got to that pivot point. And what I wanna do is just keep my, keep my needle down and just rotate, right? Don't forget the back stitch at the end. Go ahead and do that for both sides. Start at the right, then again, center back and go to the left. Go ahead and do that now. Makers, so we went ahead and attached our hood. That was our front piece to our back through our neckline and also through our sleeves. And this is what it looks like in the back, right? There's that pivot point and then the end of the sleeve. Same thing on the other side. <clears throat> this is what it looks like in the back. Right here is that corner right where it pivots right there. And you have those dots in the pattern. It is so important that you put those in because it really helps you figure out where they're going to be. So now same way that we have been um, that we have been finishing the insides of our coat. I want you to do the same thing. And I'm actually going to clip this right here. And same thing, right? That is my sleeve right there. I'm going to go ahead and trim, press, and then stitch. I want you to go ahead and do that for both sides of your under sleeves, only under the sleeves. We are going to be doing something special in the neckline because obviously this is going to be sitting in the back of our neck. So we wanna make sure that that is comfortable for us, but go ahead and yet again, trim your seam allowance press it to the side and stitch. We wanna make sure that we finish the inside of our coat and it looks just as nice as it does in the outside. Makers, so I went ahead and finish the underside of those sleeves, right? Right where we attached it. This is what it looks like from the outside. Again, I gave it a really good press. And now you're gonna put that off to the side, but not too far. And I want you to grab piece number five. This is the neck facing, and this was cut on the bias. So it has a little bit more stretch and I want you to press this with wrong sides together. And you have two dots in the pattern. So I want you to press and I want you to press. So go ahead to your um, pressing station and press piece number five with wrong sides together. Go ahead and do that now. All right, makers. So I press my piece number five, and this is my hood. I have my foot hood facing me. And then I want you to, again, you have those two notches and those two notches. So pin right there. You have a lot of fabric there, but we are going to be, um, we're gonna be trimming all of that fabric, but I want you to stitch all of this first. And you have this, right? Again, the hood is this way towards me. Guys, this piece is, again, it's cut on the bias. 
So you should be able to stretch it. Makers, I want you to stitch 5 8 inch seam allowance and I want you to fold those in, right? So I want you to stitch 5 8 inch seam allowance. Don't forget the back stitch at the start and all the way to the end. Again, the hood is facing me when I'm attaching this piece. Once we do that, what we're going to do is we're going to trim all of the seam and we are going to attach it on this side. So go ahead and attach piece number five, and that is your neck facing. Go ahead and do that now, makers. So we attached piece number five, and that is the facing, right? So now the pattern is asking us to go ahead and trim all of the seam allowance. And I would even say grade your seams, but you are going to trim quite a bit because what we wanna do is we wanna fold the facing in. So go ahead and trim. I'm trying to cut a little bit at a time because my fabric is fairly thick. And remember, this is going to go in the back of your neck. So you want to make sure that this is comfortable. All right, makers, so we cut that, right? And I want you to press this seam that we have left towards the back of your coat. And then I want you to go ahead and I'm going to first press, makers, and I'm going to slip stitch. I know that you guys don't like slip stitching, but I feel that that is the best way for all of this to look. So again, press that seam allowance towards the back of my coat, and that will be the first thing that I'm going to do. Cut these loose threads. And then I'm going to essentially just fold my facing and I am going to slip stitch. I want to slip stitch just because I want to make sure that this has a beautiful finish and if I do it on my machine I may not be quite as happy. So again start by pressing the seam allowance towards the back of your coat. Go ahead and do that now and then you can do this by machine in your machine but I am going to go ahead and you're going to fold and then you're going to fold again, right? And you are going to slip stitch all of that in. Go ahead and do that now. Makers, so I went ahead and again, I trimmed right under my neckline and I pressed my facing towards the back and now Patterns asking us to roll and I'm going to just pin it so you guys get an idea but and I'm going to be doing this by hand just because I'll have a little bit more control and it's a pretty thick seam right there and you can of course you can do this by hand or you can do this in your machine rather if you want to I'm going to just attach this by hand so go ahead and 
attach finish your facing and you really just want to close this that's why I'm doing it by hand it will just have a nicer a nicer finish especially since my fabric is pretty thick Again, I'm folding so again I'm folding that facing and attaching it to the back so go ahead and do that now again you can do this by machine if you want to but I don't recommend that you do that you have a lot of fabric right there and you want to make sure that this looks good in the back. Even my pins can't stay in. It's so thick. So and I recommend that you grab it right now like this and you give it a good press, right? And use your tailored clapper just to keep that down, right? So go ahead and finish the back of your neck. Also, this is where you are finishing the end of the hood to the back of your coat. Go ahead and do that now. Bakers, as I'm about to start a little slip stitch on this facing, do not forget to attach your label because the label is so fun with our logo and Minerva Maker. So, all right, slip stitching for me. I'm going to make myself a cup of tea and enjoy a little quiet time. Makers, so I went ahead and slip stitch my facing in and I also gave it a good press. I also went ahead and put in my um, my label and it looks great. I love it. This is what it looks like from the back. You can't really see any of the stitches. So now what I want you to do is I want you to go ahead with right sides together. I want you to pin the sleeve and you have notches right there under the sleeve you also have notches on the side of the bodice you also have a notch right there where it meets the pocket and make sure that um, if you need to ease it in that you do again so stitch five eighths of an inch inch seam allowance don't forget the back stitch at the start and all the way to the end go ahead and do that now once you do that of course also make sure that these um seams under the arms meet and that they match once you do that i want you to go ahead and grade your seams and do what I, we've been doing for the rest of the coat because again we want to make sure that it looks clean inside and out so go ahead and do that for both um, both sides of coat and if you are trying your coat perhaps <clears throat> you want to try your coat with a sweater or a jumper go ahead and do that right now and perhaps baste your seams to try on your coat see if you want to take it in a little more or if you want to let it out a little more now's your chance so go ahead and do that now makers so now that i went ahead and finished my side seams the same way that i have done for the rest of my coat the coat now is asking us to go ahead and do a hem <clears throat> and then you do a hem all the way around right because we have an unfinished edge so go ahead and try on your coat and what you want to do is you can either turn it and then turn it a quarter of an inch and stitch or you can also just turn it and stitch a quarter of an inch away from the raw edge and that goes for your hem at the bottom your hem or on the side right and also your sleeves so try on your coat and turn up your sleeve right and then go ahead and stitch a quarter of an inch away from the raw edge or turn a quarter and then stitch it's really up to you what you want to do for 
um, for your hem. And that's it. Once you do this, give your coat a really good press and you're all done. All right, makers, I hope you enjoyed that so along. If you have any questions or comments, go ahead and leave them below. As always, I will link all the fabric and notions that I used for today's sew along. And of course, don't forget to sign up for a Minerva Craft Club account. You get a discount on all your orders for 12 months. And of course, don't forget to join us on our website with a free account. We will see you next time. Bye.